All right, ladies, this is Alex from my 4 Attraction 2.0. And today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be how to deal, um, how to overcome and deal with the um, PTSD and the emotional trauma from leaving an abusive relationship. I normally don't talk about this because I think this, these are topics reserved for qualified therapists. See, so that's the first thing I got to tell you guys. This is just my opinion. This is how I deal with things that go on in my life. And since you guys like my perspective, apparently pretty decent at it, um, I thought, you know what, why not give them my opinion? And let's see how this goes, all right? So the first things first, again, see a therapist if that's the case, all right? So you guys can have emotional support from people around you. And mind you, these are all my suggestions, all right? So let's get started. So initially, when, when you go into relationships as a child, just as a child in general, you tend to have a certain image of yourself, right? It's usually blank, usually. Like when, you see, when you're a kid, you have no image. Or you are just a happy little kid, right? And that's why when you're a little kid, you enjoy the world because you have no image. So then as you grow older, you get an identity. Your first identity is you are a boy or you are a girl. That's based on your sex, all right? So then on, under that identity, they have, there are certain expectations like this, like that. Dress like this, dress like that. Sit like this, sit like that. And so your interests begin to be molded based on what people expect from you, okay? So then what tends to happen is that because of that, your likes and interests will begin to be molded based on this image you have of yourself. Now, if, you begin, if you're a girl and you begin to see yourself as something else other than a boy, other than a girl, you're going to start developing different interests that reflect the image that you have in your mind. So, what tends to happen is that the experiences in our lives changes and, and, and modifies the self-image. The self-image is what's responsible for your desires, your limitations, your belief system, what you can or cannot do. Because when somebody asks you, "Do you want to do this?" you usually say, "I don't know. I'm just not type. Of, I'm not the type of person who does this. I don't see myself doing that. I don't see myself doing that." Like there's a certain image, and you say, can, "Do I see myself doing that?" Okay, I don't see myself doing that. So that means it's not appropriate. So as you can see, those 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 the things that we say, "I don't see myself doing it," is because of belief system. I don't see myself doing that. So because of the image I have in my mind, I limit myself. All right? And that doesn't mean it's bad. I'm just saying that's how it usually works. That's a self-image. That's part of your server mechanism that controls your likes and dislikes. Usually when you change your character or when things happen, what tends to happen is that the image that you have in your mind gets modified for the good or the bad. So when you go into a relationship, let's say, and, and, and it becomes you become abusive, you begin to see yourself how you feel that you're being treated. If you saw yourself as a powerful woman and suddenly you feel mistreated by a guy verbally, physically, mentally, emotionally, your self-image will begin to be molded because you begin to see yourself as this person who's being abused. So what tends to happen is that the real damage doesn't happen in that moment. The real damage doesn't happen in that second. Quite to the contrary, what the real damage is done once you're, once you're reflecting on it, once you're relaxed and calm, and then suddenly you, you see yourself as something else. Usually the image that you have of yourself is a negative image. It's an image that's of someone who's hurt, an image of someone who is beaten down. And so what tends to happen is that that image begins to, to, to have momentum. Now by momentum, I mean momentum in terms of it begins to, it begins to grow and it begins to, it begins to look for more circumstances that encourage that self-image because that's who you are. That's who you see yourself to be, right? So if you notice who, how you see yourself right now, if you just came out of a bad relationship, the image that you have of yourself is pretty much how you ended up, how you think the, the relationship affected you. Now, that may be a fact. The problem, though, is that the fact is a fact, but then the self-image is something else. That's something deeper than that. It be, you begin to embody those facts. You begin to create more out of those facts. You begin to create an identity. And so what tends to happen when you, re when you create an identity, you, re you begin to recreate those emotions throughout your whole life because your, your emotions is linked up to your identity. That's why people say, I don't feel like myself. That's why that because their emotions is linked up to how they feel. And then suddenly they feel like themselves. Why? Because their emotions changed. So what, you, what I always tell people is that in order to change your behavior, your mentality, your thinking, and your emotions, the fastest route is to change the self-image. The fastest route. So even though the evidence is piled up against you, if you don't change your self-image, what's going to begin happening is that when you go into relationships, you're going to begin to feel those emotions. You're going to begin to see yourself as that kind of girl, that kind of person who's abused. And what tends to happen is that you're going to begin to feel those emotions. Now, those emotions is going to begin to act through you. And you know what? 
we usually get what we are afraid of and what we're trying to avoid. And we usually get what we're excited about. So if you feel the fear of it happening again, you know what's going to happen? Your mind is going to say, this is who I am. So I need to recreate this because, because you keep feeling those emotions. Your mind says, you know what, this is, this is what she feels. So let's find more ways to make her feel this way. Now, how do you know this? Because whenever you feel the self-image of being someone who is abused or whatnot, you say to yourself, I don't want this, I don't want this. But you know what's happening? You're highlighting it. And your brain says, oh, she's highlighting this. Huh, interesting. And now different memories begin to arise that's linked up to that. Who knows? That those memories may even be fake. They may even be distorted. The point is, is that it's going, to be, it's going to begin to grab momentum. It's almost like a planet, how planets are created. Little, little structures begin to revolve around a little planet, and suddenly because, because of gravity and mass, it begins to attract more and more and more and begins to develop a core, and suddenly you have a little planet. That's what happens with, with images, with, self, with, with identities, you see? So what you have to do then is begin to see yourself differently at a conscious level. Because in the beginning, it's going to be difficult. But if you don't, if you try to change your behavior before you change your self-image, you're gonna you're gonna experience a conflict, like a wall. You're gonna say, "I don't think this is me." Eh. Like you're gonna try to change it, and suddenly you're gonna go back to the same reactions. So the fastest route to change your personality, your self-image, is to literally change the self-image. Literally begin to see yourself as someone who is happy, who overcame any abuse who also has healthy relationships and not only that but also is willing to walk away you want to begin to see yourself but not just see yourself but also see how you are emotionally write down exactly how you want to react write down exactly how you want the dynamics of the relationship to be and make sure that the image that you have of yourself is of someone who doesn't need a relationship but welcomes it why because those the image of you being happy of you, of you being in a relationship with a good guy as opposed to the image of you being in a relationship with a good guy and you not minding if he leaves and you being emotionally fulfilled and you not chasing and you being happy and being able to find another guy will be completely different. You just have to be specific. Don't you say I want a guy because then what kind of guy are you going to get? You're going to get a guy that reflects the emotions and the experiences you had. So then you got to just be specific and then you know what's going to happen? Your brain is going to say, you know what, this doesn't match how I feel. Like, the, these emotions are not going to attract that kind of guy. So, that's when your unconscious is going to begin making those changes. And you're going to begin to see, see yourself as a healthy and happy person. And guess what? That's going to excite you. And suddenly, when you start seeing those signs of, those red flags of a guy that's abusive, your mind is going to tell you, don't do it by making you feel like you don't want it. You're not making any conscious effort. All you're doing is just changing your self-image. Just begin to see yourself as someone who has healthy relationships. The rest, the emotional, the, 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 the emotional reaction is going to change accordingly. Because it goes accordingly to how you see yourself. That's how I did all this channel. That's how I achieved the little success I've achieved in my life. That's how I did it, through, through this tactic. And if you guys want the book, it's called Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Mott. It talks about this. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing, you got to disidentify from your experiences. Like I said earlier, the brain usually highlights the strong emotional experiences that happen in your life. That's how you remember events. Usually, whatever gives us the most stimulus, it, doesn't, it can either be good or bad. If it's a strong version of, of normalcy, if it's a strong emotion, your brain usually remembers it. Or if it's the first time, that's what happens. And so, it doesn't just remember it, but if you begin to say this was good or this was bad and I want it again or I don't want this again, your brain is going to say it's going to begin to create an identity out of it, right? Even if it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. If you're good, like you're good looking and sexy as fuck, right? And you say, oh, I like this. Boom, your brain says, you know what? Oh, I like this. I want this. I want to be this. Suddenly you start taking pride in being a young, beautiful woman. And you know what happens when you get older? You're going to begin to feel the shame. You're going to begin to feel jaded. You're going to begin to feel scared of getting older. The same thing with fears. When you, are, when you are afraid of something, suddenly you begin to change your behavior to avoid it. Now, what happens is that the intention is to improve yourself, but what tends to happen is that either or, it's, it causes pain and suffering. The pain causes you to run away from the pain, which causes you to go to more, towards things that causes more pain. The pleasure causes you to want to keep the pleasure, and now when you lose it, which is inevitable, you're going to want to hold on to it, and that's going to cause more pain. And then suddenly the same cycle begins. So what's the solution to this? you got to disidentify from it. All of this is unconscious, what's going on here. You're trying to be happy at the end of the day, right? You're trying to, you're trying to avoid feeling bad, and you're trying to be happy. You feel, you see, you see these images of you being abused, and you feel these emotions. 
Now, what tends to happen is that rather than sitting still and observing it, the natural reaction is to try to get distracted. The natural reaction is to try to avoid the pain. That's a natural reaction. And now what I always say is that whenever you're doing something that's not working out, do the opposite. Do the opposite and see what happens. So what you have to do then is bring presence into your pain. Why? Because when you bring presence, which is to say doing the opposite, which is, okay, rather than trying to distract myself through watching another YouTube video or going to yoga or doing this or going with my friends, and it doesn't matter. Like, actually, it's actually good to get support from your friends. But the point is, is that you want to develop the muscles to be able to sit down and relax underneath, underneath the pain. Because it's almost like stretching. When you stretch in the beginning, when you, you, it's hard to stretch because you haven't done any love long enough. And when you stretch, it's going to be painful. But if you breathe into the pain, right, and then suddenly you're going to notice it's going to be able to stretch a little bit more and a little bit more. But it's going to be painful. Now, if you say, oh, fuck that shit, I'm not stretching, right? Like I did today, I, I went through halfway through yoga, right, again. You, you, you don't improve. Like, you just don't improve. You get more stiff. So you have to breathe into the pain. Relax, observe it. Bring all of your conscious awareness to the pain because you were just doing the opposite. Why not do something else and see what happens? Why not just do the opposite? So, how do you do this? I'm going to talk about that. I'm getting ahead of myself, all right? So, okay, I'm, let me show you how to do it, right? So, actually, one of my favorite things to do, and I don't do this often, but I did it, and it really worked. I don't know why I'm not doing it more often. It's writing down your physical experience. When you feel the pain or when you feel the, 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 tragic, um, the, the, the tragic fear of thinking of what happened or thinking of maybe that next guy is going to reject me and, and having emotional reaction to guys that are negative and based on past experiences, the, 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 what most people do is focus on the, on, on the objects, on the thoughts, because that's, they think that's who they are. So then this is what you got to do then. Okay? Literally find yourself in that emotion. Look for yourself. Okay? Literally get a pen and paper, right? Literally get a pen and paper, right? And write down, okay, who am I in all of this? Because there is someone who's, who's suffering, right? You, you're suffering on someone's behalf, am I right? Somehow, you're suffering for someone because you feel the pain. You're saying, I suffer. I, best with trade. I feel afraid. I this and that. Okay, so then let's explore who that I is, okay? So then you start noticing, okay, let me feel the physical sensation now. Okay, what am I feeling inside, all right? You start writing down, literally writing it down. I feel chest here. I feel tension in this part of my chest. I feel like a little bubble of, of, of warmth in this part of my stomach. Um, I, know, I'm, I notice that my, my neck stiffens up when I feel this pain. I notice that these thoughts arise and you write it down, right? You say, oh, interesting. Like you look, you're looking, it's like you're looking at the clouds and you're fucking exploring the, the clouds, right? And you notice, oh, huh, okay, my back stiffens up, okay. And then you keep exploring. You notice, huh, like it loosened up. I don't feel that tension anymore, okay. And then suddenly you feel a jolt of, 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 of fear. Boom. Now write that down. How does that feel? Hmm. Okay, I feel adrenaline going through my body. Hmm, interesting. My, my blood rate is going high. All right. Blah, 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 blah. You feel this. The thoughts that arise is, okay, what are my thoughts? Okay, my, my thoughts are saying this. My thoughts are saying And you're just writing it down. Now, where are you in all of that? I mean, there's someone there, right? You see, it looks like there's someone there, right? But when you break that down into little parts, compartmentalize it, you're going to find that it, it was actually, there was no one there. You were just identifying with your thoughts. Like, the thing you called fear, PTSD, and again, it feels real, so I'm not discrediting you. But what I'm saying is that when you break it down to the physical sensations, you start noticing, holy shit, these are just physical sensations, like pain. Right? It's just physical sensation. Your body stiffens up. You feel the fear, right? But then now you just, rather than being that fear, you, you're literally writing it down. You're becoming more, you're becoming more curious about the experience rather than the interpretation of the experience, right? So then, who is the one who's observing all of this? You can't find no one there, right? But somehow, you are there observing it. Who is it? It's no one. You are the, what's giving life to this thing you call your body. You see, you are was giving, was animating your thoughts, but you're not the content of your thoughts. You just uh, the, you are just the, the 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 screen, and the object of your awareness are the pixels that arises in the screen of a movie. As soon as the pixels leave the screen, you're you're still the the the, the screen is still there. The pixels are not there, but the screen is still there. Another movie might come up. Suddenly, you have a different experience, but same screen. 
the movie cannot be there without the screen, but the screen can be there without the movie. The problem is that people are identifying with the movie, with the pixels, rather than the substance of those pixels, which is the part that you couldn't find. Remember that when you remember when you try to find yourself, where am I? Where am I? Okay, I'm not this. I'm not that. Well, then who's suffering? It's all an illusion. It's just, it's an insubstantial phantom. It's not there. Now, what does happen then is that when that happens, then you could just chill, right? It's like there, there, there's no big deal. You could just experience the pain objectively and literally write it down. You literally write down what's happening. And this is one of the most powerful things anyone could do to disidentify and, and, and allow the pain of suffering from other men and people in general to dissolve. That's one thing you could do, right? Another one, like I always say, is am I trying to feel better? Literally asking yourself, am I trying to feel better? Because whenever you feel that urge of fear or because of some people get like for example like i read like if a guy i get scared when a guy raises his hand gives me a high five she gets scared oh shit right that's because you're identifying that's because you're you're that emotional pain is still linked up it's still stuck in you it's still stuck you haven't let go you haven't realized its true essence that it's just a physical sensation and not you but because you feel that that is you you got to carry it around because i got seed i got this but then you start noticing okay who's i Okay, let's look at the thoughts. Hmm, who's I? Hmm. You write down the thoughts. Hmm. My thoughts are just little neurological, neurological synapses firing or some shit like that, right? And then you start noticing the emotion that you feel that like you are, because the I is usually is usually is usually um is usually fueled by an emotion. You know, you say oh, I. There's no I. It's just a physical sensation. And you're like, okay, who's suffering? No one's suffering. Huh. And then you just sit there, you feel the pain, right? And then you start, and the thing is that the reason why you react is because you thought the things that aroused in your mind and your consciousness was real. It was you, it's not you, dude. It's not you. <laughs> right? So ask yourself, am I trying to feel better? And then notice if you're trying to feel better when you feel that pain, that, that anxiety. Because you feel the desire to escape it. You feel if you're trying to feel better and you notice it, right? And then you ask yourself, if you are trying to feel better, then you ask yourself, what would happen if I stopped trying to feel better? Just for 10 seconds. Just for 10 seconds. And see if the suffering stays there. You just, just, for, just for 10 seconds. Okay? And then you let it be for another 10 seconds. I'm like, I mean, how about another 10 seconds? Right? You're going to feel the surge of emotions. You're going to feel your consciousness trying to link up to another memory. And you allow it to happen, but you just see if you're trying to feel better. Okay, if doing this means I'm not trying to feel better, what would happen if I just stop trying to feel better? Then suddenly, the thoughts might arise, the images might arise, okay, or they may not arise. They may get stronger, or they may not get stronger. But the point is, is that you're just going to experiment just for one or ten seconds if you're trying to feel better. And just dropping it. Just see how it is just for ten seconds not trying to feel better. What you're going to notice is not as bad as it looks. It's just You're just chilling there. What's really happening is that is your resistance to the pain, is your desire to escape the pain that's causing the friction what you call pain. It's like being in traffic, like I always say. You could be in traffic, late to work, and there's nothing you can do about it, but you're complaining. Or you could be in traffic, late to work, knowing you could not do nothing about it because you, you tried, but then you say, you know what? Fuck it, I'm late. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, I'm, not, I'm late, man. There's nothing else I could do. Literally, there's nothing else you could do. What are you going to do? Just sit down and just listen to music or put you, um, mind for attraction. That's the difference. You Same situations, same circumstance, same outcome, but one, you choose to suffer, and one, you choose not to suffer. One, you start making future projections. And one, you just say, you know what? I'm accepted. There's nothing else I could do. Sure. And that's how it's done. Right? Another one is smile at your body for trying to help you out. Remember, this fear is your body trying to help you. Your body saying, oh, fuck. That's right. Let me run away. And you try to run away, right? What I want you to do then is just to notice and not get mad at yourself. Not say, fuck. I'm such a pussy. I feel afraid. Yeah. Right? No. You have compassion for your body and realize that your body is just trying to help you out. And you allow your body to catch up. You know there's no threat. Just allow your body to catch up. Allow it. Just say, smile at your body when you feel that fear. Just like, oh, it's trying to help me out. And you just breathe into it. And you just have compassion. You're like, you know what? Thank you for trying to help me out. Right? And you notice your thoughts. Fuck, fuck, I don't want it to hurt me. You say thank you for trying to help you out. Because it's really, it doesn't have any malicious intent, man. It's just trying to help you out for your self-interest. That's what it is. You just have to recognize it and not get mad at it. And not judge you. Not judge yourself for it. 
And when you're talking to the guy, it doesn't matter. Like, cause, cause that's why I read. Like, sometimes when a, when girls have trauma from um, physical abuse and whatnot, when they're around a guy, they feel fear, right? So then, what I what I would tell you is just notice your breath, of, of, or become aware of a physical sensation, right? See this. Um, use this, like I always say, the little clicker, right? Right. And every time, all you do this, all you do is just when you're talking to a guy, you promise yourself, my goal is to notice my breath, right? And you're talking to him, right? And then suddenly you feel fear. And because, what tends to happen when you, when you feel fear? You usually lose touch from the environment. You go into your head, right? Because there's a threat. And so that gravitational pull from the environment to the head usually amplifies those thoughts and becomes more stronger. And it, and it carries a momentum with it. So what's happening is that you're just losing your attention from your breath to, um, from the present moment to your mind. And because of that, your, your mind will begin to create events that are not even based on reality. It's going to begin to um, exaggerate it. So what I want you to do is this. It's not to notice your breath, but to notice when you forget to notice your breath. Like, I forgot to notice my breath. Now I'm back. Okay. Right? I'm talking to you guys, you know, chilling, right? And I'm like, blah, 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 right? And the thought arises, oh, fuck, he might hurt me. Notice your breath. Okay, I forgot. I forgot, I forgot to notice my breath. Okay. Let's say even three seconds later, you, if you forgot, right? And then a minute later, you're like, oh, fuck, I haven't noticed my breath. Boom, you notice your breath again, right? And again, the point is, is to not notice your breath 24-7, but to notice when you forget it. So what's going to happen is that, like I said earlier, those gaps between thoughts and no thoughts are going to get shorter and shorter. Now, you know what's happening here, right? In the past, those emotions may have gotten you lost in thought, which in this, in this case, creating future scenarios and and. and, and and, it's, and, and predictions as to what would happen. He might hurt me. All based on past experiences. Even though it's irrational, your body feels like it's real, right? Your body cannot tell the difference between reality and perception. It, 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 it dubs um, 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 the outside world for the inside world and focuses more on how you're interpreting it. So then what you're going to do then is you just notice the breath. And then suddenly, a thought arises, you feel fear, right? And then in the past, you may have gone deep into it, but now you just go a little surface because you just notice you, you forgot your breath. Suddenly you do it again, oh fuck, you heard me, I can't believe, oh fuck, you notice your breath again, oh fuck, I forgot, right? And then what's happening is that you're gaining the mental muscle to be able to just sit down, feel fear, but still remain alert and alert of your body. Because the problem is not the thought itself, it's just you seeing the thought and following it, you know? It's kind of like hearing. It's kind of like hearing somebody talk shit. It's kind of like hearing some, somebody talk shit about or someone you know. The more if you listen to them talking shit about them, you're gonna start to believe it, right? You go, oh, you know, maybe he's right. Maybe he is an asshole. Okay, like people who you're uncertain about, like ah, you know, he's decent. But then suddenly you hear people say, I fucking hate that asshole, and then you hear somebody says, I hate that asshole. You're like, you know what? Yeah, he is an asshole because you're getting confirmation bias. That's what happens when you believe your thoughts. So then now what you're doing is is saying, okay, he is an asshole. Oh wait, okay, back here, back into it. And so you're developing, you're developing those muscles to be able to stop the, 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 the momentum of, of the stream of thought, which usually causes the suffering because you begin to interpret things and you begin to predict things that are not based on reality, but based on fear and emotions. And so this is more of a process. So when you're talking to a guy, it may be a little difficult. So then what are you going to do then? You're going to practice it during waking hours. You just practice it. Like when you're in basketball, you don't practice when you're playing games. You practice it alone. Heck, you even practice with one hand, two feet under the basket. You get used to that, right? And you move a little further. So how is this done? You first start simple and without a lot of suffering, which is through meditation. You wake up, you sit down. Okay, let me practice awareness. Okay, boom, boom, boom. It's kind of like lifting weights. And then you go on to the world. And, and, you know, you may lose attention, but you return to this. Right? And the more you do it, the more you're going to be able to disidentify to the point that there's going to be barely any gaps of awareness. You're going to notice the thoughts, but because you practice so much being able to notice your thoughts, that it's not going to like, draw you in. But if you are struggling with noticing your thoughts, then just notice your thoughts almost as though as you're listening to a radio. Just listen to the radio of your thoughts. Mm, okay. Like literally just sit down like you're listening to the radio. Like just listen to the radio of your mind. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. You just notice it, right? You're just noticing your, the thoughts that arises. And when you, whenever you lose attention, right, and you just go into the stream of thought and into mind and all that sort of stuff, right, and you begin to make an identity, you return to it. You're like, oh, let's go back to listen to that radio. You notice it. You listen to your thoughts like you're watching, like you're watching, um, like you're watching like the clouds pass by and stuff like that, right? And that's how it's done. It's very simple, right? Um, and you start small. You start off 
when you meditate, and because it, the, 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 the emotion is going to be extremely difficult, like, especially if it's tough, right? You start off small. You start off with little weights. You start off with the, with the little things in life. When someone knows you, when you're in the line waiting for someone, you notice your breath, right? Boom. And then you say, oh, fuck, I can't, this motherfucker needs to get here. Boom. Oh, I fucked up my breath. Boom, in your back, right? And what's happening here is that it may seem silly, but like your mind doesn't control you no more. You're going to be able to sit down and not even think. But when you think, because you barely think, it's quality. You're not just throwing out shitty thoughts. They're quality thoughts based on peace and not on fear. And this is, the, this is not the easy, this is not the quick fix, but it is the best fix because it's based on being self-aware and not creating an identity based on your problems that happen in your life. Yeah, that's what I do. All right? Another one that you could do is just ask yourself, I wonder what's going on inside of me at this moment and just remain alert and feel whatever you're feeling. Um, I recommend, if, you are, if I could recommend you guys a book on this, read um, The Power of Now by Ed Carteau. Talks about that. Um, Radical Acceptance by Tara Bach, some shit like that, right? And The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. It talks about mindfulness and explain it very, very well, right? And that's how you do it. I mean, I, I know there's different ways to do it. I mean, this is just my opinion, and I hope you guys enjoy it, right? Bye-bye.